Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 1268, 1268, Thursday, October the 22nd, 2020. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, so no new Spygate news, of course. As I said, you know, there's not going to be any Spygate news probably until at least after the election. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, fast-moving story that still continues to be dominating the, the news, which is, of course, the Hunter Biden slash Joe Biden issues with the MacBook and all the uh, information contained on it. So this is one of those stories that almost every hour something new drops. So this will probably be old news by the time you get it, but this is the latest that we know now. Um, first of all, we can now see that the mainstream media narrative has been pretty much blown up. They can no longer really go out there and claim it's Russian disinformation. And uh, it's not just that Fox News had uh, done a story two days ago saying that they had sources telling them that FBI had agreed that no, it was not disinformation or no, that it was not Russian disinformation. But even over on CBS, in fact, that was the first of the corporate media networks um, to come out and and do the story and say, uh, basically, the reporter for CBS, which Major Garrett is who I'm talking about, Major Garrett talked to sources at the FBI, the DOJ, and they both confirmed what DNI Ratcliffe said, which is that they have no evidence whatsoever that this is Russian disinformation, that this is, in fact, um, Hunter Biden's MacBook hard drive, and the information on it is not compromised. It, these are Hunter Biden's text, emails, and uh, pics, images, many hundreds of images. Um, so that narrative has been pretty much blown up, but you continue to see this story being links to this story to the New York Post still being blocked by uh, Facebook and Twitter. So I don't really know what has to happen there and how this is able to continue. Um, I see, there's a lot of things that I, I simply cannot explain <laughs> that should not be happening, that are happening, that that you wonder, shouldn't somebody be doing something about this? But apparently, no, no one is. Um, it doesn't seem to be a big deal. But it should be a very big deal. But that is the latest that is probably the most important thing is I think that we're going to try to run this it's Russian disinformation. I think that we're going to try to run that all the way through to election day, but they only got a couple of days out of it. Uh, now it is clear even from network news, fake news, network news now reporting. Not only that, the Wall Street Journal uh, and even I think Politico even has come out now and said, well, it appears that this is actually legitimately Hunter Biden's MacBook and the information on it doesn't appear it's been um, compromised by Russians or anyone else. This is, you know, what it is. It's Hunter's MacBook hard drive, and it's uh, the messages on it are, you know, legit. This is this is Hunter's stuff. Um, there is supposedly there's a rumor that the Wall Street Journal uh, had contacted Steve Bannon, and that Bannon and Giuliani apparently have let somebody reporter from the Wall Street Journal look at the information. They're apparently going through a verification process, and supposedly they may be the first major paper to do a full big story on this, uh, and that could drop sometime before the weekend is up. We also had Steve Bannon go on um, Newsmax, and he did a, about a 10-minute interview there where he said that um, they had planned on dropping a couple major bombshells before the debate. Now, it's Thursday evening, about 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I just checked the newswire before I did the video. There is no evidence that any major, anything major has been dropped um, like that, unless they're planning on doing it tomorrow morning, Thursday morning or afternoon, because, of course, Thursday night, tonight, as you're watching this video, is the debate. We also have now multiple, multiple sources who have looked at the information, uh, including these explicit photos, and there's 
you know, multiple sources confirming that there uh, are, uh, you know, videos or photos showing Hunter Biden with a minor, and this minor is believed to be a relative. A relative. Hmm. I wonder how distant or how close this relative is. <laughs> you know, it's, um, you know, you're getting into some pretty sick territory here. You know, it's one thing to be, you know, banging your recently deceased brother's wife while you're banging a hooker, getting her knocked up while you're having a relationship with another woman at the same time who you're also, apparently, she's pregnant as well. Um, it's another thing, while all that's going on, to be, you know, doing things with uh, a minor who happens to be a relative. Incest. A game the whole family can play. I think there's some incest going on there in the Biden uh, family. He's screwing his dead brother's, his recently deceased brother's wife. I don't guess that's incest, but it's creepy. Of course, we know that Brisma Joe likes to sniff hair and fondle very young girls. Uh, that's a problem. I mean, these are some creepy people, and I'll tell you what, Biden's wife, Jill, she's pretty creepy too. <laughs> and you think she doesn't know about all this? I guarantee you, she knows everything. Everything. We also learned in the last 24 to 48 hours that it is confirmed that it was, in fact, Hunter Biden who dropped off this computer because his signature is on the receipt. We've also learned in the past 24 hours that there is an, an anonymous source who can confirm that Joe was involved in Hunter's pay for play and that he is ready to go public. That coming from Rudy Giuliani. So Giuliani is saying, yeah, there was another source who no one's heard of yet who in the next couple of days is planning on going public. So he's being referred to now as an anonymous source. Giuliani, of course, will not give his name, but says that he is ready to go public and confirm what a lot of these emails show, along with the documents that Ron Johnson has put together, which clearly show that there was pay for play and all sorts of shenanigans going on here. So a first-hand witness who is on the inside, in other words, someone who knows Hunter Biden personally or was part of that investment group, uh, that would be a very key person. It might be one of those two people who were um, who went to prison. One of them has gotten out of prison. The other one's about to get out of prison. We'll talk about him in a minute. So this may be the person that we're talking about. Um, the other one is still in prison, and he's given Peter Schweitzer his Gmail account password, and now Schweitzer is going through his Gmail account to find more corroborating evidence. Uh, his name is Bevan Cooney. And uh, once he contacted Schweitzer and the story went public that Mr. Cooney had turned over his password to his Google account to Peter Schweitzer so that he could go in there and look at emails, which will verify a lot of the things that are in uh, these text and email messages on Hunter Biden's computer, this guy can corroborate a lot of those things. And um, once that became public, apparently, um, because of security concerns, possible threats against his life, he was moved um, right after that became public. He was moved out of his prison cell and taken somewhere else and is under some sort of extra protection. My guess is they put him in solitary confinement. He's probably got around-the-clock uh, guards watching him uh, because they're concerned for his, you know, safety. We also have another report saying that there are people coming forward, and I think this came from Steve Bannon. There are people coming forward. Sources who have spent time around Hunter Biden 
are coming forward, signing affidavits, and that these people have been waiting for this moment. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, I don't know if this is a Me Too moment or just some more of his crony business partners, people who may be caught up in some of this stuff, or just people who may have crossed paths with Hunter Biden and smelled a rat and, and determined he was trying to get them involved in something really, you know, um, illegal or, you know, not totally above board. And then maybe some of these people are now going to come out and tell what a shady character he is. So we're hearing this multiple people coming forward, sources who spent time around Hunter Biden, coming forward, signing affidavits. There are people who've been waiting for this moment, suggesting there's been people who've known about this type of corruption and probably been watching it go on, but really didn't want to come forth and say anything because you don't want to be a target of, you know, people as powerful as the Bidens. But once the floodgates uh, are um, are awash with, with the floodwaters, <laughs> as the floodgates are, are coming down, I guess um, at that point you find a little more courage. So it looks like some people are finding some courage or else they do not want to get caught up in this. Some of it's probably cover your ass type type things. Because uh, some of these people may have gotten caught up in it, maybe believe they're going to be compromised by this. You never know what people's motivations are. But I think that this is coming from Steve Bannon. And, uh, you know, when you start getting human sources who have some credibility coming forward, uh, that makes it much more difficult for the um, fake news uh, to just say, well, it's a Russian hoax, which that's now been pretty much blown up. They're all having to admit, pretty much admit now, although they won't. They won't actually admit they were wrong. But the, you know, you're know, you not seeing them really relying on that what they had been doing for the first few days of this story where they were saying, oh, it's a Russian disinformation. They're really backing off the Russian disinformation now. And, of course, even the Biden campaign, uh, this far into it, we're now well over a week into this scandal, and they still have not come out and made an official statement knocking any of this down. So that tells us a lot. It tells us that it's legit. That's what that tells you. <clears throat> and of course we have Joe still in the basement. So, I mean, 14, 15 days left in the campaign and you take the first three days of the week off. <laughs> well, he took the weekend off too. So I think he was somewhere on Saturday morning and then, but Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, not even on the, not even out of his basement. And that, there's got to be something going on there. Uh, he says it's to prepare for the debate. You don't need four days to prepare for a debate, especially when there's already been two, or at least one debate in the town hall. They're keeping him in the basement because they don't want him to have to answer or even be asked these questions. And um, then you have his wife, Jill, who they seem to like to put out there a lot. She's out there, and she was asked about, you know, the situation with Hunter Biden, which, of course, Hunter would be her stepson. And uh, she says that the American people don't want to talk about Hunter. Really? I'd say there's probably 60 to 70, maybe 80 million people who think we absolutely want to talk about want to talk about Hunter and need to talk about Hunter because it's more than just Hunter a lot more than just Hunter yeah his sexual deviancy is certainly something that you know is this is the stuff of you know the gossip mills love but for those of us who want to find out if there's a national security risk here or if there are crimes here yeah uh, we do want to uh, talk about Hunter Jill isn't it funny how Jill Biden, along with Joe, who spends most of their time locked up in a basement, somehow know what the American people want to talk about. Oh, I think she knows very well that millions and millions of Americans want to talk about Hunter. I believe it's her and Joe that don't want to talk about Hunter. Problem with Jill and Joe and most of these people like them is they're stupid. And they actually think we're stupid. That's the problem. Um, no, they're stupid. 
Uh, now, we had um, Obamia. Obamia has now shown up. Uh, of course, he was in Philly, I believe, over the weekend. Now, you have to ask yourself, why would Obamia be campaigning in Philly for Biden? I mean, Democrats, when Philadelphia, like Philadelphia is what, 90% registered Democrats? Why would you send Obama into a place where the Democrats win with 90% of the vote anyway? If you're going to send Obama somewhere to try to pull one out for Joe, you'd send him to Wisconsin or Michigan or Pennsylvania or maybe even Florida. Why would you send Obama to Philly to preach to the choir? Maybe they've seen them numbers showing that Biden is really doing miserably with the black vote and that Trump's doing pretty well with the black vote. Maybe they sent Obama into Philadelphia to shore up the black vote. If that's the case, if you have to send Obama into a place that normally is 90% Democrat, you got to be seriously worried. Huh. You have to be really worried. So you have um, both President Trump and Mark Meadows um, suggesting to Barr, now I don't know to his face or over the phone or whatever, but they're Trump in a rally and, and, and Meadows in a, in a media appearance saying that they believe that Barr should appoint a special counsel to look into the Hunter Biden uh, MacBook and all the material on it and the things associated with Joe and everything else. Um, but I think the the thing that I, I can't seem to grapple, wrap my head around, I'm grappling with right now, is how is it that people around Trump, including Meadows and even Barr, are not furious that the FBI had this information back at the time when the impeachment hearings are going on? This information would have shut down the impeachment immediately. It would have proven that Trump was right, that there was definitely a reason to raise concerns and to ask the Ukrainian president to look into the corruption. Yet, the FBI set on this. So the question that we need to know is, who knew about this? Did no shit Sherlock Ray know about this? And when did he find out? How about Attorney General Barr? What FBI agents knew about the contents of what are on this MacBook, Hunter Biden's MacBook? Who are the FBI agents that knew about it? And uh, who, who did they inform? Who, who else knew? And what did they do about it, if anything? This information should have come out during the impeachment hearings, but it did not. They set on it. I mean, I don't know how Trump takes it. I, I really don't. He's got the patience of, of, a, of a saint. If it were me, and I'm the president, and I find out that the FBI had that Hunter Biden hard drive since December of last year, just at the time the impeachment hearings are getting ready to get underway, and they withheld that, I mean, I would have had Barr and Ray in my office the following morning. I mean, I would have sent them a, you know, a text and said, hey, man, I want both you guys in my office tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. And if I found out that one or both of them were aware of that laptop and what the contents of it were, they would be fired immediately. They would walk out of the office not being the attorney general or the FBI director. And I would be telling them if they said they didn't know, I'd be saying, well, I want you to get back to me within 24 hours of exactly who the agents were who received that, took that laptop. Who are all the agents who were aware of the contents of that laptop? And did anyone else at the Department of Justice know? I mean, I, I, I would just be pissed. But Trump seems to be able to, uh, you know, just seems to be able to roll with it. And I, I don't know how, how he can do that. I would be furious. Absolutely furious. Don't know how he, how he controls himself. I really don't. Uh, 
Uh, our sheriff, Sheriff Jones, has made the national news again. <laughs> yeah, this is like the second time in, in a month now. Last month, he made the national news again when he was doing an interview and he totally debunked masks. He's like, you know, we had a bunch of um, crybabies here in the state of Ohio that wanted to make the county sheriffs try to enforce mask rules and things like that. And they talked to Sheriff Jones and he's like, I'm not going to enforce any, any mask policies. People are wearing masks. They wear a mask. They don't. They don't. I'm not wearing one. <laughs> I mean, the news media, now that they know who he is, they, they love Sheriff Jones. And I think that they, 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 they put him on because they think they want to make us look like a bunch of redneck hicks or whatever. But what they don't know is that we all love Sheriff Jones. And he represents uh, the views of the majority of people who live in this county. And that's why he gets reelected by a landslide every single time. Sheriff Jones will be the sheriff in this county until he decides he doesn't want to be anymore. And he's still got a good, probably, at least five years, and he may be ten. But <clears throat> his most recent thing uh, that he's made, made the national headline news for is that... Um, We've had all these celebrities like uh, Bruce Springsteen and then uh, Tommy Lee and all these various people say that if Trump wins, we're going to leave the country. And Sheriff Jones sent out a tweet saying that um, he is now going to be offering a full, uh, fully paid one-way ticket to any celebrities who want to leave the U.S. if Trump wins. He said he will even help them pack their bags. <laughs> yeah, they don't come to Butler County. I don't think we have any celebrities in Butler County, uh, not really, no. Um, not unless they like to open carry. And uh, you won't find many celebrities uh, who open carry, but we have a lot of people around here who open carry. Sheriff loves open carry around here. Nothing makes our sheriff happier than seeing folks walk around town with a 40 cal strapped to their hip. Puts a big smile on his face and mine. <clears throat> Remember, he said um, a few weeks back that if Antifa comes to our county, he will be there with his deputies to meet them at the county line and turn them back around. He said if there were so many of them that, that he and his deputies could not contain the situation, he said he would deputize every gun owner in the county. <laughs> and that's just about everybody in the county. I don't know anybody. Well, there's probably a few people I don't know, but everybody I know in this county owns Firearms, and plenty of them. Um, so, yeah, we're a very... Uh, a lot of people open carry around here. And uh, everybody's armed around here. So, yeah, we're all good. Um, we don't ever see NT for Black Lives Matter around here. Throughout this whole summer when all these things have been going on, it's peaceful and quiet out here. You'd never know. If, if you didn't have uh, TV or internet or something like that. If you didn't have any line to the outside world outside of this county throughout this entire summer, you would never know that riots were happening or any of this type of stuff's happening or that there's all this anti-Trump stuff out there. You'd never know it. All you see around here is Trump signs. You see a few Biden signs because we have a college right here, Miami University, uh, right here in the county. And uh, it's a pretty large facility and they're all liberals there. And uh, they, they all put signs out. But... It's 90% Trump signs around here. Um, and uh, Democrats don't really even run for office out here. They're just, it's just a waste of money. This is almost all, it's, it's about a solid red a district as you can get, I think. I think it's like 86% registered Republican or something. So, yeah, Democrats really don't even run in this county. <clears throat> they have zero chance of winning an election around here. <laughs> Um, of course, tonight is the debate. It will be rigged. Um, of course, they are going to be able to mute the microphones to some extent. They, If you look at the issues that they decided, they changed the issues. If you look at all the issues, they are all major setups. Setups for Burisma Joe. And any subject that would have been favorable to Trump has been pulled. No foreign policy talk because he's been nominated for four four times for a Nobel Peace Prize. So they're going to go back to uh, the environmental crap and leadership or some kind of crap. 
So uh, you can expect Thursday night, it's going to be two against one again. You can expect Trump to be uh, harassed. Um, I do expect that when he gets his two minutes uh, uninterrupted, <clears throat> supposedly, he is going to bring up the Hunter Biden uh, laptop and all the things we're learning from that. And I just about guarantee you when he does it that the moderator is going to cut him off and try to shut him down. Uh, they may be muting Trump's mic and maybe Biden's mic when Trump is talking, but they're not going to mute the moderator's mic. We already know what team she plays on. So you can expect another debate, much like the first one with um, Chris Ratboy Wallace. It'll be Trump debating the moderator and Burisma Joe. We will see how that goes. I think uh, Trump will win this debate. I think the only thing he has to be careful of again is um, not to get, not to let Joe get under his skin. Uh, I think he has to remain as calm as possible, and he's obviously way better at it than I am. Um, but I think um, the best thing he can do, of course, Biden is, really has no policies he can talk about because he doesn't want to tick off anyone on either side, the left or the neo libs. So I think Biden will do what he's been doing, which is just launch personal attacks on Trump uh, and a bunch of lies and propaganda for the entire time. I think that that stuff really doesn't. I think that stuff really doesn't play very well in a debate situation. I think most people watch a debate; they're they're watching to find out what policies uh, that the candidates will take hard positions on. So I think Trump would be best served tomorrow to. Um, no matter how far Joe tries to pull into the weeds into personal attacks back and forth. Although I do think Hunter Biden's laptop is definitely um, definitely a issue that needs to be brought up because it's national security. And I think Trump should definitely work on that. But I think if Trump will stay focused on his successes, and he's had many, his policies, and avoid getting drugged down into the mud with personal attacks being launched back and forth, if he can stay focused on policy, uh, I think it will make Biden look really, really bad. And I think it's actually good in a way that there's go some good side to it that they're going to mute microphones during their two-minute responses because that means that um, Trump will not be able to interrupt Biden, which means he'll have to go a full two minutes without drifting off. And that's when Jim, uh, Biden has his problems. When he has a little bit too much time to talk, he has a tendency to drift into crazyville. So this may end up helping Trump in, in the end run. But uh, I, I do expect um, Trump will be well prepared for the debate. He knows he's going into a hostile environment. He knows it's going to be two against one. I think he knows he's got to get the major issue out with Hunter Biden, but he has to do it in a way that it fits into one of the issues, probably national security or something. And then I think on top of that, he just needs to keep his cool, try not to get too drug into the personal stuff, and stay focused on reminding people about all the great things that he's done, all the great things he's going to continue to do, and um, stay focused on policy. Because most people, who if they're still undecided, and I don't think there's that many undecideds out there, but if there are undecideds out there at this point, um, they're watching because they really want to hear the hard positions on policy. And Biden can't take any hard positions on policy. He has, to, he has to talk about anything but policies. His entire approach is going to be what it always has been. Just attack Trump, personally. Just attack Trump. Make up lies, say anything. Doesn't matter. Just say it. He gets complete cover from the media, and he knows it. He can lie about anything. And that will make Trump angry, and he'll want to cut in and they want to spend a certain amount of time debunking Biden's lies. But I would be careful not to spend too much time debunking those lies. You have to leave some time for the positive to tell people what you've done, what you're going to do, and most importantly, take hard policy positions, which Trump can and does do. He just has to make sure he plays this one smart, and I'm sure he will. So we'll uh, look forward to that. So I doubt that there'll be a video on Friday because I'll be watching the debate on Thursday night. Now, if some major bombshell should drop on Spygate, I will certainly do a video. But 
uh, if nothing really major drops, obviously I'm going to be focused on watching the debate, and I'll probably be taking notes for the debate, uh, and then the, I'll do that video on Friday, which means you would see it on Saturday. So I'm doubting that there'll be a Friday video unless something major drops, but I expect I'll be back on Saturday with the video, and uh, we'll talk about the debate and any new developments, because Steve Bannon told Gorka that they were going to try to have some major bombs drop before the debate, which means it has to happen today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow with more Towergate. See you guys. Bye. Or I'll be back next time there's some news. Probably Saturday. See you then. Bye.